official Cut Dad press conference. We are expecting one of our star cutters to sit down any moment, at which point I will go down into the conference room where I can begin fielding some of the questions that you all asked on the internet. And here comes our hey. star cutter now. Hello, 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 hello. Ah, well, it's finally happening. The very first official Cut That press conference. And uh, I'm very excited to have you all joining us here on this magnificent press conference stage that was provided by both the generosity of the Bank of Haiti and the ISCL. So thank you to those two wonderful organizations for giving us this beautiful stage on which to have this press conference. I would also like to thank everyone at home, the brilliant spoon cutting enthusiast community that we've grown here on the Cut Debt channel for making this possible and for giving us a reason to continue to bring the professional sport of spoon cutting to the world. So this is going to be an interesting sort of video. Uh, it's the first of its kind that we've done. And as a result, it won't be perfect the first time around, but it'll take a couple, couple tries to work out all the kinks, to see what you guys like and to see what you don't like, and to do more of what you like. Uh, this is going to be unique in that it's sort of a chance for spoon cutting to have a more personal side because I get to speak to you directly as well as some of the other cutters here who will be joining us uh, in coming episodes or maybe later today. Uh, so why don't we dive into it and start answering some of the questions you guys asked. Will we be seeing more mini matches in the near future? This is asked by Mushroom. Excellent question, Mushroom. Um, yes, the answer is yes. The league matches are the focal point of spoon cutting, and we've only ever uploaded one of them to the channel. Our goal is to be doing at least two a month, uh, later on down the road, we're going to start off with doing one a month, but the next time we bring a competition to you, it is going to be on a scale that is just incredible. Cutter, what happens to the items post-cut? This is asked by our friend Sample Text. Sample Text is a very good friend of the channel. We eat the food afterwards. If it's uh, the Cranshaw melon, for instance, that was a pretty big melon uh all the melons are cut up immediately and eaten by all of the personnel that are in the studio the camera guys the sound guys the editor editors the coaches uh and the cutters as well Cutter, how are you doing with the loss of your child and your wife <laughs> next question please Cutter, is there a reason the isml has set the target to be 5,000 subscribers yes there is a reason upon reaching 5,000 subscribers with the Cut That YouTube channel, we will be given access to the YouTube space right over in Manhattan. And the reason we want access to that YouTube space is so that we can begin filming spoon cutting competitions there. Uh, we'd have access to a full production facility in which we can really take the competitions to a very high level of quality and of scale. We're gonna be bringing in YouTubers from all over the place to compete and to show their abilities off as an athlete behind the board. And uh, we need to get there soon because the deadline is January uh, as set by the ISCL. What does the ISCL think of people that cut with knives? <laughs> I think they're heroin addicts. Madison Arsenal asks, what is the most difficult cut known to man? Madison, you've been hanging around this YouTube channel for quite a while, and I suspect that you probably know the answer to this already. Yeah, it's, I still have night nightmares about it. Well, let's move on. How does one get psyched up for an event like this? And also, what originally drew you to this fine sport in the first place? And that is asked by Return to Sender. Well, to get psyched up for any spoon cut, whether it's a soft cupcake or a very firm gourd of some kind, I do the same thing every week. And I rip two shots of tequila immediately before walking into the studio and picking up that spoon. Because tequila, 
Jeez, it is so good. What drew me to this fine sport? Uh, when I was a child, I was uh, given the opportunity to eat at a lot of very nice restaurants all around the world, and all of them were, ve were very dimly lit. And come dessert, the wait staff would always bring chocolate ice cream for me. That was my favorite. And with that glistening ball of chocolate ice cream, they would bring a silver spoon. And it was during my youth in those very dark, dimly lit restaurants when I had this shiny, glistening spoon and this shiny, melting ball of ice cream. And I drove that spoon down into the pile of ice cream. That's when I first realized that spoon cutting is something that I always wanted to be a part of and it's something that I wanted to pursue professionally. What's going on with the dinosaur eggs you said you wanted to attempt to cut? Very important question. The dinosaur eggs are in the works. We've located an individual who is capable of obtaining them, uh, who works for an interesting organization. Personally, I will be flying down to meet him in the next three to four weeks or so. Uh, and that should be an ex interesting expedition that you guys will be there for. What sort of dangers are most commonly associated with professional spoon cutting? That is asked by Malas Merck. Uh, honestly, it's the fact that spoon cutters are very highly paid. And as a result of that, you sort of stand a very high chance of falling victim to any number of vices that are out there, whether it's drinking, which I enjoy very much, Always responsibly, though. Always responsibly, just like they say in the commercials. Here's a good one. Do you believe that spoon cutting is capable of growing larger than the short-lived fork cutting scene? This was asked by Marshmallow. Uh, I do fully believe that spoon cutting is going to eclipse the disgusting, tasteless fork cutting sport that is a tarnish on the history of mankind. I would actually equate fork cutting to heroin use. What is the cutter's workout c routine? Asked by Mr. Derpy Bird on YouTube. Uh, well, I've been training weightlifting for 10, almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years in April. And uh, I've been dieting for maybe seven or eight of those years. Very strict diet of wonderfully boring foods. Fitness is something we've always considered bringing to the channel. We've always considered showing you exactly how a professional cutter stays in shape. It takes uh, an extraordinary amount of dedication and physical talents to be able to get here. And I would love to show you guys exactly what a work typical spoon cutter's workout routine looks like because they're quite intense. And uh, I would also love to just benefit the spoon cutting community by giving them shredded bodies and uh, making everyone look like a complete stud on the beach. All right, everybody, that about does it for the first press conference. There were some more questions. We obviously didn't get to all of them. I think we got some of the most important ones and the ones that you guys were most interested in hearing the answers to. Uh, it is Thursday. It is Thirsty Thursday. Uh, everybody, anybody out there in the tri-state area in New York, New Jersey, if you're interested in celebrating, come on out. We're gonna, me and the Greek cutter, celebrate this tradition the same way a good Christian goes to church every Sunday. Thirsty Thursday is our religious holiday. And uh, we're gonna get going. We gotta do some drills in the morning. And I hope this turns out the way I want it to and the way everyone else here at the channel wants it to and most of all the way you guys want it to. And uh, looking forward to hearing your feedback on this press conference and Looking forward to some more questions the next time around. Uh, that'll be it for the evening, everyone. Take care.